your Zoom screen and choose the Spanish option to hear the forum in the Spanish language. Antes de contestar, quisiera decirles a nuestros hispanoescuchas que presionen abajo de su pantalla el botón de interpretación Elijan Español para poder escuchar esto en su idioma. Gracias. Gracias, Rosabel. Welcome to the Colorado State House District 11 and 12 Candidate Forum, sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Boulder County. My name is Josephine Porter, and I'm a proud member of the League of Women Voters, and I'm pleased to serve as the moderator for this afternoon's forum. The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan political organization. For a hundred years, a hundred years, we have encouraged informed and active participation in government and influenced public policy through education and advocacy. To remain nonpartisan, the League never supports or opposes political candidates or parties. Our candidate forums are typically held in person with moderator candidates, volunteers, ushers, audience members all in one place. But to observe public health best practices, we're participating online. For this, we are so pleased to have the partnership of Longmont Public Media and our Spanish language interpreter, Rosabel Rice. According to FCC policy, candidate forms must be broadcast in their entirety, except by media reporting on the events. Candidates or their staff are asked not to record this forum. The Colorado House of Representatives is comprised of 65 representatives. Representatives are elected every two years from the district in which they live and are limited to serving eight consecutive years. Each representative district consists of approximately 77,500 citizens. District 11 consists of most of Longmont, including west of the diagonal and Niwok. District 12 is eastern Longmont, mostly east of the diagonal and 95th, including Louisville and Lafayette. The format for tonight's forum, or today's forum, will be as follows. Each candidate will have one minute for an opening statement. We will then begin with questions which have been submitted electronically online by the community to the league. Questions have been reviewed by our question volunteer um, screeners, league volunteer screeners, and will be addressed to all candidates for both house districts. We will try to ask the candidates as many questions as time permits. Each candidate will have up to one minute to answer the question. We will finish with one minute closing statements. Tonight's forum participants are in ballot order, Mark Milliman, Republican, House District 11, Karen McCormick, Democrat, House District, District 11, Tracy Burnett, House Democrat, House District 12, and Eric Davila, House District 12 Republican. Now to the opening statements and questions. Again, each candidate will have one minute to respond. Please watch for the timekeeper's signal at the 15 second mark and end when your time is up. For the opening statements, we will begin with District 11 Republican candidate, Milliman. Candidate Milliman. You're on mute. Uh, first of all, there we go. We'll get it. All right. <laughs> thank you all. <laughs> all right. Thank you. I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters of Boulder County for hosting this and allowing us to uh, uh, speak our minds here today. You know, 2020 started out very optimistically with unprecedented economic growth, low unemployment, until Colorado and the nation was stricken by the impacts of COVID-19. I saw how the decisions were being made, the wide-reaching and short and long-term impacts uh, that were... Uh, imposed upon us without considering the true impact on the people of Colorado. I saw how our legislature lacks diversity of thought to make informed intelligent policy decisions. It's this, uh, these reasons that I decided to run for state assembly for House District 11. And I've spent a greater part of my three decade career in telecommunications building, whoa, that quick already, building multi-billion dollar businesses. 
Uh, I'm running for my, I'm running because my family and I are suffering like the rest of you. Uh, the next session of the legislature is about curing the pain and suffering running throughout our community and not continuing to hurt people. My candidacy uh, is about reestablishing Colorado so that people can uh, resume uh, their lives as normal. Thank you. District 11 candidate McCormick. Hi, I'm Dr. Karen McCormick, and uh, my path to this moment began actually in childhood as the daughter of parents who spent over 30 years in service to our country. My dad was a fighter pilot and retired as a rear admiral in the United States Navy. It was his and my mom's example that instilled in me the values that I hold dear as an American and Coloradan, integrity and honesty, personal responsibility, hard work, respect and compassion. I have spent my entire life in service to community, practicing veterinary medicine and surgery and running my own um, small animal hospital here in Boulder County. I have a lifetime of experience in problem solving. I've also been a volunteer with Intercambio teaching English and serving on two nonprofits dedicated to preserving animal health. My husband and I raised three kids here in Longmont and lived here for over 26 years. I love my community and look forward to an opportunity to further serve my neighbors here as state representative. Thank you very much for having us today. District 12, candidate Burnett. Hi, I'm Tracy Burnett. I'm a mom, engineer, entrepreneur, world-class runner, and a lifelong Democrat. I have an engineering degree from Cornell University and a Harvard MBA. My campaign is focused on my three passions that have guided my decades of community service throughout Colorado, including at the state capitol. I call them the three E's because I'm an engineer. It's environment, education, and equity. And equity includes affordable housing and affordable health care. You know, people ask why I'm running. Well, it's very personal for me. My son nearly died of an asthma attack when he was a toddler and the abysmal air quality on the front range has caused me to take him to the ER multiple times over the years. I'm also allergic to bees and I walked away from paying $600 for an EpiPen prescription. You know, healthcare is a human right, not a privilege. And also a friend of mine nearly died in the floods that, that were caused by climate change in 2013 when the St. Brain River cut its bank and, 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 cut and nearly killed her. So I'm looking forward to answering your questions. Thank you. Thank you. District 12 candidate Davila. Hello, my name is Eric Davila. I'm a proud Chicano and a member of the Republican Party. As an active volunteer with the Boulder Valley School District and the director of the Boulder County Republicans Liberty Roadshow, I'm in touch with all the community, both the left and the right. At every street fair and every public event in Boulder County, I get to interact with the community for hours at a time. And that's what makes me uniquely qualified for this position. Thank you for your consideration. And thank you for the League of Women Voters. The first question will begin uh, with District 11 Democratic candidate McCormick. Are you satisfied with Colorado's response to the COVID-19 pandemic? If yes, why? If not, what do you think should be done instead? Can more be done at the state level? Yes, I am satisfied with Colorado's response. We had a chance to watch what other states were doing as the pandemic made its way towards us. Um, I do think that as a scientist and a database person that it's incredibly important for us to follow the science and follow the guidelines that are keeping people safe and um, protecting our community um, from the health risk of this pandemic. I wanna take the opportunity that we have learned through the last six months and be better prepared for the next pandemic to make sure that, because there will be another one, to make sure that we as a state and as a nation are prepared to meet the challenges on the health front as well as the economic front. So I, we've lost over 210,000 people uh, to date with another thousand on Friday. Um, it's really critical that we continue to follow the health guidelines to protect our neighbors, our families, and ourselves. Candidate Burnett. 
Yeah, I think the uh, state has done a pretty good job of, of um, um, going through this pandemic. You know, I, I think what's really important is that we are all in a community. We need to help each other and help those who are, are hurting um, and, and come together as a community. This is not a rugged individualism kind of thing. We have to come together as a community and we have to put health and safety first. You know, people are not going to feel safe. Uh, if they don't feel safe going out and shopping or taking their kids to school, then um, you know we won't be we won't get beyond this. So you know we're still learning about this virus, and I agree with Dr. McCormick. We need to use science to guide uh, our way out of this pandemic. One of the things I'd like to see is um, you know more consistent messaging on public safety guidelines. And also I'd like to see some rapid at home and in business testing so that we can uh, guide ourselves out of this. Also, I think it's really important to set realistic expectations. We're going to be living the, with this for a while until that vaccine is safely uh, distributed. So I think it's really important. Thank you. <laughs> District 12 candidate Davila. For the most part, I'm happy with the state's response. I think it was a little overreaching on personal freedoms. But then, once again, I'm a person of rugged individualism. So. I disagree with Tracy and her position with that. Um, I'm looking forward to the vaccine. I look to be one of the first people to get it. And I'm hoping that puts us on the track to getting back our economy and bring things back to normal. District 11, candidate Milliman. Yes, thank you. Um, no, I'm not pleased with the response that the state took uh, here. It was very heavy handed and broad reaching. Uh, I'm, a, I'm an engineer, I have a master's in science. I'm all about science and making proper risk-based decision. 80% of our elderly people in long-term care facilities passed because of this virus. Uh, our uh, Colorado Department of Public Health Environment as well as Boulder County Public Health didn't take the proper safety precautions quick enough to protect the most vulnerable portion of our society. Instead, we mandated blanket mandates that have had very limited effectiveness. Uh, on actually mitigating the disease. Uh, so we could have done a much better job uh, also uh, by allowing the legislature to properly function during this period of time, I believe we could have made better risk-based decisions. So moving forward, I hope that we can take a look, learn from our past and do a better job for our future. Thank you. For the next question, we'll start with District 12 candidate Burnett. The question is from the constituent, I am concerned about the further burden COVID-19 has placed on our education system and educators. How do we support and how would you support as a, a, a house in the house, educators and outcomes for our most vulnerable students? Well, one thing, um, I, I agree. I, I think uh, it's really uh, difficult. Uh, for one thing, there's students right here in our district who do not have access to internet. And so uh, that's one thing I would support is uh, uh, allowing students who cannot safely come into school uh, to um, have access to internet. Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, I, and also right off the bat, there's three things that we can do that affect education. Vote yes on Gallagher, no on in the income tax reductions uh, it's on the ballot and no on the voter improved enterprises. This will bring more money into our, uh, well, keep money into our education system. So thank you. Candidate Davila. Well, we're very blessed here in uh, Boulder County. Boulder Valley School District pays their teachers an average of $80,000 a year for somebody who gets over 10 weeks off a year, that's a pretty good salary. And I believe our teachers love the kids that they have and I think they're doing the best they can. The procedures that the uh, superintendent of the Boulder Valley School District is taking to slowly bring the kids back into school mm -hmm. in the introduction process is, is a well thought out one. I'm very happy with it. As far as money, throwing money at a problem doesn't solve the problem. But if we do need money, just think about this. We can make up for the loss of taxes due to COVID without increasing taxes by relocating current state spending away from duplicative, ineffective, or wasteful programs, especially those outside the core responsibilities of state government. For example, the state gives $25 million a year to CU to promote activism. Do we really need to support activism? That's all I have to say. 
District 11, candidate Milliman. Yes. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Um, our response, uh, we need to fully reopen our schools and do that quickly and very safely. Our schools do a lot more than educate our children. They feed people and uh, they allow parents to go back to work. No place is more important than low and single income households that have been disproportionately impacted by this. I've already been working with St. Brain Valley School District for several months in uh, trying to help them figure out ways to safely and effectively reopen the schools so we can get back to work and get our children back in schools. We've done a terrible job um, by closing these schools to our children's mental health. Our behavior health facilities are filled to capacity right now. So the pain and suffering we've inflicted on our children is uh, terrible and we need to uh, remedy that situation. Thank you. District 11 candidate McCormick. Yes, I, I believe that our public education system is a pillar of our democracy. And until we have every single child in our community and in our state have access to a world-class education, then we have a lot of work to do. I too have been working with the leaders in the St. Brain Valley School District um, and, and have learned through this process that the most important thing that we need to do is listen to teachers, listen to educators, listen to the administrators that are on the front lines on how they are gonna feel safe and can protect their kids in school classroom situations. Um, it is critical that as we address the stress on the teachers and the um, kids, the me their mental health uh, care during this time, that we do pay attention to the funding. Because if we lose the funding, that is uh, the safety net that uh, allows these kids and teachers to have mental health care, then we're just really going backwards and not forward. So um, we also need to look into how we can make the School Finance Act a little more equitable. Along those lines, and um, we'll start with candidate um, Davila. Uh, Colorado is facing a projected budget shortfall of more than $6 billion in the next three years because of the reduction in tax revenue caused by the pandemic. What new ideas do you bring to address the economic crisis that has resulted from the COVID-19 pandemic? Well, once again, I believe that all the funds we need are there. When you think about our taxation, it's a percentage. So as the cost of things go up, the amount of money they receive goes up. We don't need to increase any more taxes percentage-wise. We need to increase the economy so we bring more money in, but it's all about the waste that we have in government. If we would just audit the government and remove ineffective programs, we would be able to make up that shortfall. And that's my position. Thank you. Candidate Milliman, District 11. The first thing we need to do is reopen our economy. We open re our re reopen the economy, we increase our tax revenue. So without doing that, you know, our state will continue to struggle and we will continue to need more money. The other thing is just like uh, Eric said, we need to assess how we're spending money. We, uh, fortunately we have an office of saving people money um, down at, in Denver of which the uh, uh, Lieutenant Governor is head of and gets a double salary uh, for that role. So, you know, I would hope that they would have lots of great ideas of uh, how we can reduce uh, our spending and reduce duplicate spending within our state. And maybe the first thing would be to get rid of that and have the legislature review the budget and take out duplicate uh, spending and waste after we re reopen the state. District 11, candidate McCormick. Yes, I agree that we need to open the economy, but there's a step before that. And that is to make sure that those that are participating in the economy, consumers feel safe, not only feel safe, but are safe so that they can fully re-engage in the economy. The other thing is, yes, we are in a big hole as far as our budget goes. Um, and there were a lot of cuts across the board that had to occur this past spring. So it's really critical that we recognize the hole we're in and that we stop digging. Uh, as a business owner that had to be very fiscally responsible in running my own business, 
I know how to watch ins and outs. Um, and at this point in time with our Colorado budget, it's very critical that we watch the ins um, because there are a lot of uh, state programs that our voters want and need, transportation, education, healthcare, mental health access, um, and we need to be fiscally responsible to be able to pay for those programs. District 12, candidate Burnett. Yeah, um, I, I agree that with, with many things that Karen is saying, um, but you know, we were in a fiscal crunch before this. Tabor, Tabor has strangled our, our uh, government, especially in terms of transportation and education for decades. And so in the longer, I'm sorry that Fairtax Colorado did not get on the ballot. I promise I will work to get it back on the ballot because we need more investment in education and transportation and Fairtax Colorado is a Tabor reform. Um, I don't think those kind of things, uh, Tabor need is should be in the state budget, uh, a state uh, constitution. Uh, so um, that's one thing. Um, but going forward, it, we need to, we need to be feel safe as, uh, as residents, as, as people work, as workers, before we can open up this community, uh, our economy. But as we do this, what I want to do is invest wisely in what I call the sustainable infrastructure of the future. And that's by putting people back together, back to work in good green energy jobs like building energy efficiency. Thank you so much. Um, we're gonna have the next question and we'll start with District 11 candidate Milliman. The question is, climate change is becoming increasingly visible in our region, particularly in the surge of wildflower fires this summer. Over the coming years, Best available projections show that Colorado is increasingly likely to see emergent problems with regards to water scarcity, droughts, reduced air quality, and increased flooding risks, among others. If elected, how do you plan to reduce carbon emissions while also helping prepare for and adapt to a rapidly changing climate? Candidate Milliman. So first of all, uh, we've already done a great uh, job migrating from coal into safer, cleaner um, gas energy. We need to continue to invest and develop better, cleaner technologies moving forward. Uh, wind and solar won't do it. There are other technologies that we could uh, invest in and start producing cleaner energy with. We need to continue that. Uh, with the wildfire situation, we need to uh, do a better job with forest management and start reinvesting in foreign forest management to continue to mitigate the fire risks that are posed. So uh, as you know, uh, we take the next session of the legislature, we need to continue uh, to look at these alternative forms and newer, greener um, energy uh, solutions. District 11 candidate McCormick. Yeah, this is actually the issue um, that caused me to run. And it is, uh, I consider this uh, our responsibility and our moral obligation to attack this with everything we've got. Um, I do believe that wind and solar will be part of the multifaceted solution to address our energy needs towards a more renewable um, package of options. And I plan to be part of a team of leaders who will collaborate with industry groups, with advocacy groups, community leaders, healthcare professionals, and, um, and those that are also in the oil and gas in industry right now. Um, we can work to stabilize our electrical grid and expand microgrid options across our state. We can work with architects and construction leaders for more um, green buildings. We can open up opportunities for new jobs. We can consider putting a price on carbon and we can work to look for ways to um, increase carbon sequestration through our agricultural and building environments. District 12 candidate Burnett. Yes, um, I think that climate, the climate change is a single most uh, critical issue of our time. And uh, I think the pandemic is really a window into what our world will look like if we do not do not address climate change. So uh, I have to say, so, you know, solar and wind with battery backup is the cheapest, 
lowest priced utility grade electricity on the market today. And we see utilities right now, like Excel, they're decommissioning coal fire plants. They're, they're even looking at some gas, at, at decommissioning gas powered plants. And they're committed to 100% renewable electricity. So here's the things we need to do. Building, improving the building uh, energy efficiency, 100% um, renewable electric grid. We need to modernize our grid, make it more resilient, electrified public and pri private transportation, electrified buildings, um, you know, community solar. I'm totally agree with Dr. McCormick on carbon sequestration and carbon pricing, but we need to bring everybody along, not just those people who can afford Teslas. We need a just transition for low income people and also people affected by the oil and gas industry, uh, their jobs affected by the oil and gas industry. Bring them all along. Thank you. District 12, candidate Davila. I'd like to address the forest fire since that's to be something that's going on right now. Um, in the 1930s, an average of 30 million forest acres burned every year in just the 11 Western United States. With the U.S. Forestry Service doing fire suppression and fuel accumulation mitigation, by the 1930, 1950s, you were down to 3 million. And that average was a pretty good constant all the way up until about 20 years ago, when unintended consequences from well-intended legislation stopped that mitigation. And now we're reaping the results of that. I'd like to see us get back to what the U.S. Forestry Service was doing, and I would like to see us take in consideration that we build dwellings that can withstand the natural disasters that occur in those areas. Let's not put trailer homes in Tornado Alley. Thank you. The next question, we will begin with candidate McCormick from District 11, and the question is, do you support the Black Lives Matter movement? What might you do to understand the ways in which racism affects our state and to use your position, if elected, to advance racial equality or equity. I'm sorry, I read that wrong, racial equity. Yes, so yes, I am very supportive of the Black Lives Matter movement, um, understanding that until lives that have been left behind matter as much as everyone else, then we have a lot of work to do. And me um, growing up in a, a privileged family um, and having the opportunities kind of laid at my feet, I understand that I started at a starting line that was ahead of many others. And so there's personal work to be done. Um, and I'm working on all that uh, myself by doing a lot of reading and studying, but most important, listening. And so as a state representative, it'll be my job to listen to the communities that are affected, to understand what it is that needs to be done, and to be part of that team that moves them forward. I need some water. <laughs> District 12, candidate Burnett. Yeah, um, I used to manage large international development projects. And one day I had a new boss, and the very first day on the job, he said, uh, I needed to get a new job. And I asked him why, and he says, because I've never worked with someone like you before. I come from privilege, and, I, and I'll tell you, that was humiliating. I fought through that, and I, and I won. But people of color address, have this happen every single day. Yes, right here in Boulder County. So I think we need to, you know, everybody deserves to be treated with respect and dignity so they can follow their dreams. So I, we do need to stand up for discrimination, the people who are put down every single day. And so I do support the Black Lives Matter movement. And um, here's what I think, people, people of color, they should be at the table, seen at the table, they should be heard and they should be supported. And I've actually asked a lot of my um, uh, black and brown um, colleagues, you know, what, what should I do? And they said, address the systemic inequities that we have in our society, like affordable housing, affordable health care, good schools and food. Thank you. Candidate, District 12 candidate Davila. Well, as somebody who grew up in East LA, I have experienced police brutality. Um, I tell you, it's just a very rare incident. I support all of our police, and I believe Black Lives Matter, just like all lives. I absolutely do not support the organization called Black Lives Matter. It's a leftist organization, and I'm obviously not a leftist. I personally do not believe in outcome of equality or 
equality of outcome or equity as you refer to it. I believe in equal opportunity. And that's really what I believe our country stands for. Um, candidate Milliman, District 11. Thank you. I've spent my 30 plus year career in telecommunications and in engineering, working with people of all cultures around the world. I live in a lot of places, experienced a lot of things. Um, people everywhere deserve to be treated with dignity and respect. Uh, we all have our uniqueness to it. That's what makes us all special. That's what makes the world a fun place is that uniqueness. We need to continue to celebrate those differences and those uniquenesses while providing equal opportunity for all people. This country was founded on the basis of that and founded against racism from the Declaration of Independence. Uh, and uh, you know we've been fairly successful at doing that. Yes, we can always do better and we will continue to try to do better. I support our police and our other first responders out there dealing with the situation, but rioting, looting, and the far leftist Marxist Black Lives Matter organization is not the way to get there. The next question will begin um, with District 12 candidate Burnett. That question is, and I've kind of combined a couple here. How would you, and it's along these same lines, how would you engage with your constituents to make sure you understand and can represent the needs of all community members? And what are your plans to ensure all your constituents have access to the same resources and opportunities, regardless of their economic, socioeconomic status or race? I'm just glad you asked that question. Um, I've been doing that my whole campaign. I've, in fact, I've been doing it all my adult life. Um, as president of the board of the Our Center Board of Directors, a homelessness prevention organization, uh, we came together as a community of, of all political fields to uh, help people in our community get back on their feet. And we helped over 16,000 families in, during the Great uh, Recession get back on their feet. And that gave me a real window into people who are hardworking people who are working every single day to make end meets, ends meet. And that includes Latinos and everybody. So um, I, I regularly talk to um, people who of, of, of different, um, you know, economic backgrounds and, um, and uh, minorities. Uh, this is, to me, what's important is to talk to people on the ground and hear what their issues are and, uh, and work on those systemic inequities. So that's just the way I work and uh, that's the way I'm gonna be a representative. My door is always open. You can always email or talk to me. Thank you. District Health Candidate Davila. Once again, we live in a very blessed community. Um, and unfortunately, my position that I'm running for does not interfere or does not affect the community. My job is to represent my community on state issues. The community that I live in is pretty much controlled and affected by the city council and the county. So, my position on that is simply, I hope they do a better job. We have great organizations here, privately run organizations like Family Assistance Association or Emergency Family Assistance Association and Crayons to Calculators and many, many others. I don't believe it's government's role to provide charity. That is the role of the churches and schools and community. Thank you. District 11 candidate Mill Milliman. Yes, uh, that's the reason why I'm running. I saw what was happening to the people in our community, people across all the spectrum of our community. I've been out walking the community since I decided to run, to feel the pain, to understand the difficulties that they were having, surviving, paying rent, educating their children, um, going to church services. Uh, I will continue to do that and to continue to learn from them I make fact-based, risk-based decisions um, you know, based on logic and reason. That's also why I'm running. And I will take into account their considerations, their needs, such as I've been doing currently in the policies that I put forth in this next legislative session. District 11, candidate McCormick. Yes, 20% of our community is Latinx and it is so important to listen and continually consult with community leaders um, across our immigrant community. Um, as 
I have been doing with El Comité, the Colorado Immigrants Rights Coalition, Color, Intercambio, um, and our own Latinx outreach team. So these are people that actually can um, bring that information uh, to those of, the, of us that may not live in that community. And I'll have to just say one thing that our job at the state level will absolutely affect our community. That's kind of the whole point of having um, these districts. What we do at the state level absolutely comes down to affect our neighbors. And one example is the driver's license access program that was state that was passed at the state level, which was a great help for our immigrant community and those undocumented people in our neighborhood. So um, I just want to continue that work. The next question, and we'll begin with District 12 candidate Davila. It's um, um, fracking. Please share your opinion about the role of the legislature and fracking in Colorado. Well, I believe in the will of the people. In 2016, Initiative 75 was voted down. In 2017, the Initiative State Statute didn't even make it to the ballot. In 2018, Proposition 112 was voted down. And of course, Jared Polis ignored all of that and pushed through Senate Bill 181. I think the people have spoken and I support the people who say that we should allow fracking in this country and especially in our state. Well managed and regulated. But this Senate Bill 118, I don't support it. And obviously the majority of the, of the state does not support it. District 11 candidate Milliman. Yes, fracking has helped this country maintain and achieve energy independence. It has also helped us to migrate from uh, dirtier energy sources such as coal. But we've seen the improvement in the air quality in the front range. Uh, we still have a ways to go, but it has been getting better. And for those of us suffering pulmonary disorders and ailments, uh, it has made life a little bit better for a lot of us. Uh, fracking, like any other technology, has continued to mature. It's gotten better, it's gotten cleaner. The industry has gotten uh, uh, better handling it and more efficient using it. Uh, it is something that uh, the energy industry provides, uh, what is it, 255,000 jobs in Colorado. So until we can migrate to better energy sources and better energy um, platforms, you know, fracking is a vital, uh, plays a vital role in the Colorado economy as well as our energy independence. District 11, candidate McCormick. Yes, the fossil fuel industry has gotten us to where we, we are over the last hundred years. And we're all thankful for the, the energy that has supplied our homes all of these years. But it is a finite source. It is, uh, has tremendous cost to health um, and our environment uh, and really has not been playing by a fair uh, market playing field. And Senate Bill 181 actually put health and safety first. Um, and as a doctor, that is so critical to me that we focus on health and safety and do what we can to move our economy in a just transition way to more renewable sources. The future is ahead of us. Those in the fossil fuel industry actually see it coming too and they're preparing for it. So we just need to all have everyone at the table and work with uh, new innovations and new technologies to make sure that we move our economy to this renewable market. Candidate Burnett, District 12. Yeah, um, I think the will of the people said we elected uh, legislators like Mike Foot to um, uh, enact uh, you know, Senate Bill 181 to put health and safety first over oil and gas legislation. So, and uh, I have to agree, you know, I, I am a world-class runner and uh, every single day I have to check both the weather and the ozone level to see whether it's safe to run. To run. And it's a lot of it is caused, Dr. Helmig has, has already measured that a lot of the wells in Weld County are the cause of our ozone pollution right here in Colorado. So I take issue with the fact we have some of the worst air quality in the nation. 
So I think we all want clean energy. So our clean, you know, clean air. So I support the 2000 foot setback and the 24 seven air quality regulations that are being considered right now. And I stand ready to, to introduce additional legislation if necessary. We need to hold oil and gas companies more accountable for the damage they're doing. I've talked to oil and gas industry executives who said, get rid of the bad actors. Thank you. The next question, and we'll start with District 11, candidate Milliman is on family leave. The initi there, an initiative on the ballot seeks to create a statewide paid family and medical leave insurance program. Do you support this measure if it fails, should state or local lawmakers pursue similar measures? So the current measure that is being proposed here is one of the most radical paid and family leave bills in the country. Uh, we do not know the bounds of which this will cost the state and cost the um, uh, employees uh, on it. They propose a 0.9% payroll deduction that can only increase by certain limits and has a cap on it, but yet they still do not know the limits and the number of people that would be signing up for it and whether that would be enough. Uh, also, with the liberal way it could be applied, it can almost guarantee people a three-month vacation every year, uh, or three, yeah, three-month vacation every year. So uh, although it is a nice attempt to, you know, help provide for certain situations and emergencies family may, families may um, incur. Uh, it's not the right uh, measure at this time. It needs to be revisited and refined. Candidate, District 11, Candidate McCormick. Well, the, I think the three week, three month vacation is a false narrative. This uh, is great for small businesses and it's great for employees. It does exempt small businesses that have nine or fewer employ employees. Um, and for example, on a, a person making $60,000 a year, uh, the employer and the employee will split $540 a year to fund this fund. Workers are not eligible until they've earned $2,500 and they, um, their jobs are protected after working for six months. So that equates to about 13 cents an hour for those that decide to uh, participate. As a small business owner that had 24 employees, this would have helped my small business. I would have been able to keep people home that were sick, that felt like they couldn't afford to not come to work and spread their illness to everyone else. So they showed up sick. Um, so this is good for businesses, good for people. Um, it makes sense. The numbers do work, and um, I'm voting for it and, so, and ev encouraging everyone else to vote for it as well. It's Proposition 118. District 12, candidate Burnett. I totally support pay, pay, paid family leave. You know, I'm a small business owner too, um, but uh, I had, I had um, a difficult pregnancy and uh, I had to stay at home during that time. Now, I was lucky in that I was only, you know, 80% of Coloradans don't even have paid family leave. I had it when I was working for a corporation and I was able to, to stay home and safely bring my child into this world. But I also, uh, as a small business owner, I also had to take care of both my family and my mother who went through a long, long, slow illness and nearly, and, and then eventually died in my arms. You know, these kind of things, and fam to me, family comes first. And the healthier your family is, the better you are going to be as a worker, too. It just makes sense. The economics are there. It's only 13 cents an hour for an employer to provide this kind of, of, of desperately needed um, benefits. And if this doesn't go through, doesn't pass, I'm for paid sick leave. I mean, people should not have to choose between being sick or losing their jobs, you know, it just doesn't make sense. This is, we are community. We're not, <laughs> we're in a community. Thanks. District 12, candidate Davila. Opposition 118, in my opinion, is redundant. We already have paid family leave. We have maternity leave, paternity leave. Uh, this is something that's determined by the market as to what the quality of how much leave you get. But every business I've seen has PTO or some other equivalent. So it's redundant in my opinion. And 
unintended consequences from this well-meaning legislation is that if you take three months off, you come back to work. Guaranteed you have a job, a job, not the same job. If you had a great position and you take off thinking you're going to come back to that great position, no, you could come back to some other position, some lower level position, because that employer cannot leave those positions unfilled for that long of a time. Thank you. Okay, this, the next question, we're going to begin with candidate McCormick, District 11. And this is along the same lines of, as far as the ballot. Amendment B. Amendment B is on the ballot, and it's basically, I guess you could summarize it as a repeal of the Gallagher Amendment. It's, um, what is your position? Do you support this measure? Um, if it fails, is there anything that state or local lawmakers can do to um, pursue similar measures? So Amendment B is absolutely a repeal of the Gallagher Amendment. And um, any, any measure similar to this has to go to a vote of the people. So state legislatures could certainly vote to bring something similar back. This measure is outdated. It was um, amended to our constitution in 1982 and it's put real constraints on our ability as a state to fund um, critical services in our community, fire departments, libraries, hospitals, and schools. So it's a, it's a complicated idea. And so uh, I've been working hard to educate the voters. It has tied our property tax to uh, personal property tax or, or residential property tax to commercial property tax in a fixed formula. And it worked okay in 1982, but it's out of date and out of balance. Um, and is actually hurting our rural communities even more than our front range communities. Um, and I'm for eliminating this outdated formula um, and it will freeze prop uh, uh, residential property taxes right where they are. District 12, candidate Burnett. Okay, Karen took a lot of my talking points, but I'll go on from there. Um, yeah, I totally support it. Um, it. This has bipartisan support. I have talked to senators in the legislature who support this. So it, it's to me, this is an absolute reason why tax policy should not be in the state constitution because there's unintended consequences. Like this is, this is a per perfect example of it, but this ensures hundreds of millions of dollars for things that we all care about as communities, like schools and fire protection and other services. And yes, it, it freezes the assessment rate at, uh, for, uh, at 29%. That's all good. But, you know, some of my constituents have also asked, well, what, you know, what does it do to my property taxes. For one thing, there is a Homestead Act that we have that that is on the books in a state that has passed by the state legislature. It's for elderly and disabled veterans who, if they live in their home for more than 10 years, they get half the property tax. That is going to continue. Thank you. Candidate District 12, candidate Davila. I am against this amendment. I believe the Gallagher Amendment was a fantastic amendment, a predecessor to Tabor, which I support fully. This protects the average homeowner. As far as being bipartisan, I want to know who these Republicans are that say that they support this, because the only ones I've known are the ones that are heavily invested in housing complexes, where they pay a just amount of tax on those complexes. This is good for there for the protection of the people, voted in by the people, and should not be repealed. But I'll let the voters decide. District 11, candidate Milliman. Yes, this is up for the voters to decide, which it should be, uh, since it's regarding taxation. But I also uh, will put no on this, uh, because I also support Tabor. Uh, it does help vital services, and we do need to fund those. But we need to find the money to uh, properly allocate to those vital services. Here in Boulder County, uh, there's a lot of vital services that the county does not properly allocate for that have for decades been shortchanging uh, that uh, even raising the taxes would not help. So as we've talked about before, we need to reallocate the funds and use the funds appropriately for public safety, for fire, uh, and for the other, other purposes, instead of continually trying to dig deeper into the taxpayers' pockets for more and more money. The next question, and we'll start with candidate District 12, candidate 
Burnett, we're going to go through some of these amendments because people are asking about it. Um, Proposition EE, that is the cigarette, tobacco, and nicotine products tax. Um, how, what is your position on Proposition EE? Yes, because uh, it would uh, allow, it would give $173 million to education, but it also means that vaping products are not, will now be taxed. You know, there's a real problem with especially kids and vaping right now. And so this is, just makes it less likely for them to use it, but it's just a smart thing to do. So I'm totally for it. Candidate Davila, District 12. I'm a bit torn on this one. Um, we refer to these as sin taxes where I come from. And sins should be taxed heavily, apparently, according to the people who create this amendment. I think of it as personal freedoms. Um, but as far as it doing anything to prevent kids from vaping, the tax you put on this is not going to stop this. We live in an affluent neighborhood. These kids got money. They can go and buy whatever they want. So that's just a fallacy. It's a, that's never going to happen. So I'm going to side no, because it's personal freedoms and I'm all about less taxation. District 11 candidate Milliman. So I'm going to buck the trend uh, on this one uh, for a change because uh, I, I actually I'm a strong believer in personal freedoms and allowing people to, you know, uh, choose to do what they want to do as long as they don't harm others. I'm also very skeptical about the money going to where it says, because every time we do something like this, uh, very little of the money actually does go for its intended purposes. But on the other hand, uh, just as Eric said, you know, uh, we live in a very affluent area. The kids will find the money to get to buy the vaping products. It's still a huge problem. Uh, we're not keeping it out of our schools. We're not keeping it out of our kids' hands. And it's damaging them uh, tremendously. Uh, so anything that we can do to make it more difficult to obtain these products, uh, I'm for in this case. So I will end up supporting EE in this case uh, alone. District 11 candidate McCormick. Yes, I too am in support of Proposition EE um, to increase, uh, to actually to incorporate vaping products under this umbrella of tobacco tax. Um, it does create a new tax that did not um, exist before to cover those vaping products. And statistics have shown that as you increase the price of these discretionary items, it does uh, lower the amount of the number of people that purchase these, these um, items. It does dedicate the fund towards education programs that are specifically designed to be um, anti-nicotine and anti-tobacco um, products. So it takes those funds and turns around and helps kids understand uh, these very addictive products and not to, not to go down that road. And also to health and mental health programs. Um, those funds will be dedicated to uh, shore up some of those programs that, that are needing in funds. Next question, and we'll begin with candidate Davila, District 12. And that question is, um, what is your, uh, it's regarding affordable housing. What is your vision for meeting the affordable housing needs of your constituents and what role should the legislature play? None, none at all. I believe the market works itself out. I don't believe it's a place of government to provide subsidized housing. But we do have subsidized housing, and I believe the current system is fine. Furthermore, I'd like to see less housing being developed in our, in our area. I believe we've got an overcrowding problem in Louisville alone, where I live. Uh, the roads and infrastructures that exist need to be expanded to handle the growth that we're experiencing. And I believe that we should be putting that burden on the developers and tell them if they want to build more housing tracks, that they have to pay for the infrastructure to put it in. The tap levies that we have on them, the tap fees that bring it in apparently are not enough to do that, or it's just being mismanaged by my city and county. Thank you. District 11, candidate Milliman. Yes, I agree with Eric. Uh, this is not the place of the legislature to uh, subsidize housing or to uh, 
regulate that aspect of it. It should be up to the free market. Uh, the biggest thing we need to do to uh, make housing affordable, and we know this in Boulder County because we do have a stream affordability problem. Uh, one of it is because we've choked off supply, but uh, we need to get back to work so people can afford housing in the first place. Second of all, there are innovative housing solutions that can be implemented that are uh, low cost, but provide very high quality housing for people that can be done throughout the community. But that's more of a county, more of a city um, investment to make, and they need to look at it at that level. So we need to take it out of the state realm and uh, let Boulder County and uh, the city of Boulder and Longmont and the other municipalities deal with it. Candidate, District 11, Candidate McCormick. Yeah, affordable housing is a real issue here on the front range. I believe that every human being deserves a safe place to live and sleep and keep their belongings. And the issue uh, it, that we get into is that too many people in our communities are not earning a self-sufficiency standard of living. They're working full time. Uh, they're working all that they can and they're still um, spending over 50% of their income on housing alone. That leaves uh, uh, their part of the pie less for healthcare, less for their kids, less for food. And so it's really about increasing the, the, the different pockets of needs. And our Boulder Regional County Housing Partnership has a great plan. This is a countywide issue and I support their plan to increase the goal of 12% uh, affordable housing inventory. Um, and it's through a variety of means, uh, looking at securing land and redevelopment options, preserving affordability. Um, so it's not just about building uh, new structures. There's, there's more to it than that. Thank you. District 12, candidate Burnett. I agree that the, with Dr. McCormick, um, our minimum wage is way too low. Uh, and we do have, I mean, people in Boulder County, they, uh, we have a huge, huge affordable housing issue here. Many people pay, you know, 50% or more of their wages in housing. I was on the Boulder County 10-year plan to end homelessness in Boulder County Advisory Board. And so I got to know a lot about this issue. It is a continual need. We have people who are homeless vets uh, or people who are, have mental and chronic, uh, you know, chronic drug addiction problems. I mean, there's a whole continual continuum of needs. And I see as a state legislator, part of it is that we can, we can talk among ourselves and help our communities and spread ideas. Right here in, in, in Longmont, there is an affordable housing unit that is going up uh, for micro houses, 100% uh, electrical. And, this, uh, and what this does is that it breaks down some of the not in, not in my backyard barriers to affordable housing. But there's another thing too, it's a social impact bonds. And I don't have time to talk about it, but call me anytime. I'd love to talk about it more. The next question, and we're gonna start with candidate Milliman. How do we pay for transportation and the massive infrastructure needs of Colorado? Well, infrastructure has to do with uh, with more than just automobiles and roads. Uh, there's other parts of our infrastructure that we need to be concerned with that I'll address as well. But like it or not, we built our cities after the Second World War around the automobile and around personal mobility. That cannot be eradicated overnight. We still need to continue to move goods and services via roads. And we can't make it harder like we're doing with the Boulder um, county 10-year transportation plan. We're making it a lot harder. We'll create a lot more pollution uh, in the county as a result of that plan. We need to continue to figure out how to move efficiently goods and services and people through the county in vehicles for the time being. Uh, the other infrastructure I think we learned is telecommunications. I've spent my whole career in telecommunications. Corey Gardner and the FCC at JetPi have done great in bringing more broadband services in rural areas. I will continue to work with them to provide competition and uh, more rural broadband. District 11 candidate McCormick. Would you be willing to repeat the question, please? Yes. Um, basically, it's how do we pay for transportation and the massive infrastructure needs of Colorado? Gotcha. So um, part of this does go back to our budget. So many transportation projects over the past five to 10 years have been put off 
uh, after um, running for Congress in the fourth congressional district, this was a big issue. Uh, the roads and bridges are in dire need of repair. Our communities need it, um, the people need it, the trucking industry needs it. And um, that brings me back to looking at these budget issues that are on the ballot. And I encourage everyone to study those hard before voting. The other thing is we need to make sure that people can live where they work. Um, and to examine RTD um, and its mismanagement over the years, uh, there is a, a bill that passed to really do a full audit on RTD. I think there's been a lot of mismanagement of funds going into RD, RTD. We know this from Longmont. We've spent $40 million over the past uh, 16 years into a fund and have yet to see any return on our investment. So I fully support that audit um, and hope to move forward in public transportation. District 12 candidate Burnett. Yeah, um, you know, we have, we spent here in, in, in the Longmont area, we paid over $40 million into RTD with nothing to show for it. So I am willing to look at al alternatives to RTD and certainly agree with an audit of RTD. Um, but I also think, you know, I, I often say that, you know, the New York City subway was, was built like 20, you know, uh, over hundred years ago. I mean, things have changed since then. And so I think coming, this pandemic has also shown that people, I think it's gonna change the way people live and work and commute. A lot more telecommuting. Um, I'm also for, um, looking at, you know, our gas tax has not in, increased in 30 years. So we need to look at that and also uh, vehicle miles traveled so that electric vehicles are part of the solution too. So, uh, and also, you know, multimodal transportation. And I got to say it again, Tabor, we need Tabor reform. This has been an issue forever. We need more money for, to fund our roads and Tabor does not make sense. District 12 candidate Davila. Mass transit in our area and as well as the rest of Colorado is a total disaster. The rail system, the commuter trains are billions of dollars over budget and decades behind on where they were promising to be. We are supposed to be able to go from Louisville to downtown Denver to watch a game five or six years ago. That never happened. We're still throwing money into it, good money after bad. If we want to raise money to help with transit, we should stop working on these mass transit train systems. It's just not effective. You can drive faster than the train can get you there. And it actually costs less when you consider the cost that the state's putting into it, as well as the fees. We're just burning money. So we need to get rid of that. We need to reimagine all of our mass transit thoughts. I support the bus system, but I believe it needs to be rehauled um, and basically audited and, and redone. I agree with uh, both Ben and McCormick. We, we've got to do that. Thank you. The next question, and we'll start with District 11 candidate McCormick, and it's about partisan divide. How would you approach the partisan divide in the legislature and in Colorado, keeping in mind that one more than one third of Colorado's voters are registered as unaffiliated? Yes, uh, I really love this question. Uh, I've been a relationship builder my whole life. I actually grew up in a Republican family because, you know, most military families in the 60s and 70s were. And I understand the unaffiliated uh, registration. Coloradans are independent people and our, most of us really don't like labels put on us because it really creates barriers to conversation and to find ways where we actually agree. Um, what's great about Colorado state legislature is that 95% of the bills that were passed in the, in the 2019 le legislature were bipartisan. Um, we know how to work together. We know how to get everybody at the table. Um, the values that we need in true leadership are those um, leaders that lead by example. And that means finding ways to get bills passed that make sense for the most Coloradans and to get bipartisan support. So I look forward to working with my colleagues across the aisle that wanna to work towards um, helping all Coloradans. District 12, candidate Burnett. I am so glad you asked this question. You know, I, my family uh, that I grew up in, uh, my dad was Republican, my mom Democrat, and now my brothers, they represent the entire spectrum from socialists to uh, Trump supporters. 
but they support me as well as many people. Uh, I have supporters from all political affiliations in, that are supporting my candidacy. It's because, you know, we, I grew up in a family where what matters most is to talk and to listen to under, and to understand. And I have a demonstrated ability to do this. When I was the president of the Our Center Board of Directors, we had liberals to libertarians on that board. We came together as a community for common purpose to help people get back on their feet and self-sufficient. So this is just the way I work. People want to be respected, understood, and heard. And from there, what I look for are opportunities for us to come together. No party has a monopoly on good ideas. Thank you. District 12 candidate Davila. I'm glad you asked that question. You know, ever since the Democrats lost their fight to create Jim, or maintain Jim Crow laws in the United States, they've done nothing but try to create a plan of vilifying the Republicans. If anybody needs to come from the Democrat side, they need to stop accusing Republicans of being racist, misogynistic, evil, greedy people, or try to push grandma off the cliff. I see it every election. I never see it from the Republican side. I see no pushback from them. I need to see Democrats stop doing that. And maybe that'll start the good feeling between our two parties and get rid of this bipartisanship. District 11, candidate Milliman. Well, I guess I should say, boy, great question. I love it too, but I won't. Um, it's a good question though. Uh, you know, there was a time where we all believed in the American dream and we all believed in the same things as Americans. I grew up during that time. Most of us did. I still do believe in that. It's just that we got there from different angles in different ways. But at the end of the day, we were all Americans. That has been changing. Uh, it's been changing radically over the past several years, and it's accelerated in the last three to four years. And, uh, you know, I find that highly uh, offensive. Uh, we currently have a legislature there that has a radical bent towards the left. They're not moderate. They're not across the spectrum. I'm running for that thought diversity. I want to be, have a different um, opinion. I don't vote one way or the other. I don't like the label, but I will vote for the people of my district and what they want and how they want it. The next question will begin with District 12, candidate Burnett. What do you think is the most pressing matter that pertains to the next generation of Color Coloradians who may be voting for the first time? Do you it's want me clearly, to say that again? Yeah, it, it's clearly climate change and it's just not the next generation. It's affecting people right now. Like I said, a friend of mine nearly died uh, when the St. Brain River uh, cut a path through her home, her Longmont home and nearly killed her. You know, just the other, the other week, we had the perfect combination of high temperature, extreme temperatures, wildfires, and our abysmal air quality that caused right here in Longmont, the air, the worst air quality, it was, it was, unhealthy for everybody. Worse than Beijing. Climate crisis is happening now. That's why I'm so, this is my number one issue. We need to do, we need to do more. We need to do all the above, building electrification, um, you know, electrifying our, 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 our um, renewable energy for our electric grids, um, electrifying our, our um, public and private transportation, and bring everybody along, not just the people that can afford Teslas, but everybody along on a uh, sustainable infrastructure of the future. Thank you. District 12, Kennedy Davila. The young voters of today, I believe the biggest issue for them is to whether or not we can maintain the quality of life that we've come here, come to be accustomed to here in the United States. The unintended consequences of well-meaning legislation, once again, think things out before you vote. Do not vote on emotions. That is the downfall of the country. District 11, candidate Milliman. Yes, for, for the young voters, there's definitely a lot of uh, different ideas floating around these days. But the biggest thing, uh, just as Eric said, we need to assess our quality of life and getting back to the quality of life they, that we've had. A lot of these kids are not, do not know, you know, what it was like uh, before. 
We need to reopen our economy. We need to reopen businesses. We need to get back to work. We need to get back to school. And that's the number one priority at this point in time. You know, people in Boulder want to solve the problems of the world. Well, right now, our problem is that people can't put food on the t- table. You know, people can't go back to work. People can't keep a roof over their head. That's the candidates that you need to look at. Who's going to do that? Who's going to do that most effectively and use science, facts, and risk-based decision-making to do that? District 11 candidate McCormick. Yeah, I have three millennials here living with me, so boy, do I hear it. Climate crisis is big on their minds. They want the world ahead of them to be a livable planet, um, and they are very, very concerned on that issue. The other big issue to them, uh, and we've seen that this summer, is they want all of us uh, and those that went ahead of them to, to actually face and fight systemic racism. We have just um, brushed that aside. Um, those of us that have had the quality of life that we have had, every single one of us here on this call, most likely, many have never, ever had that opportunity, never had that kind of quality of life. Um, so they don't want to go back to that. They want to move forward. And it's also really important for the next generation to make sure that, that we, as their leaders, work to strengthen our democracy, to make sure that their voices actually do matter and that their vote does matter so that, um, and I'm so thrilled to see the young generation come out in support of so many important issues. I think I lost my place. Are we done with that? Okay, a new question. Is that where we are? A new question, great, thank you very much. Um, we have a question here about state income tax reduction. Proposition 116 is um, would change the Colorado statutes to reduce the state income tax from 4.63% to 4.55%. What is your position? And we'll start with candidate Davila. Well, you picked a good one for me there. This is the one uh, proposition I have not decided on yet. On the one hand, I'm all for reducing taxes and any other time of the uh, of life, I would definitely vote yes on this, but because we're in the pandemic, I, I'm thinking it's not the right time to do this. So with that said, I'm, I'm gonna say I'm still undecided. District 11 candidate Milliman. Um, I've certainly decided on this one and I am for it. And the reason is that uh, people need more money in their pockets right now. They need more money to rebuild their businesses. They need more money to uh, keep their homes and to pay their rents. And when we, they can do that, when we can open up the economy and get it moving again, then the state will get the uh, tax revenue from that. And as we've seen in the past, you know, uh, that if you lower taxes, they can increase receipts in a growing economy. We need to help our, the people here first, instead of taking the money from the people and then giving it back to them through subsidies and through um, handouts and spending money we don't have. We still have a lot of waste in this government that we need to go through, scrub the budget and reduce the waste and redundant spending. District 11 candidate McCormick. Okay, I'm gonna be the voice of fiscal responsibility. Uh, this lowering of the flat tax, number one, we have a flat tax here in Colorado. It's actually one of the lowest income taxes in the country, one of the six lowest in the country as far as the state goes. We are in a hole, we don't wanna keep digging. And this would give about an average of $40 back for per year for the average family. And when you look at the economy of scale of what this could do to actually um, shore up our budget that is in a world of hurt, this makes absolutely no sense to be doing this at this time. This is not the time to lower the tax rate when it really doesn't help people. It really won't help the economy. And those things that people really need in their communities, the things that the, the state is supplying and um, uh, funding, we need to make sure that we at least hold on, stop the bleeding, and um, find ways to be more effective and efficient in our spending. And candidate Burnett, District 12. 
Absolutely not. I'm a fiscal conservative. This makes no sense. It would take $150 million out of our budget. Do you know that is three quarters of the budget for full day kindergarten, a very popular program right now? It makes no sense. A person making $50,000 gets $40 back. But you know who makes out the best? The top 1%. This is a giveaway to the rich, the people making, you know, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. And, you know, we have a flat tax. You know what that means? It, it, what it means is that people right now who are rich, who are, you know, the top 1%, they do not pay the same level of taxes that people uh, at the lower income are making because they don't pay as much in sales tax and property tax. This is just a giveaway to the rich. And, you know, it also just leaves people of color behind. It just, it, we, it's just fiscally irresponsible. Thank you. The next question, we're going to start with District 11, candidate Milliman. It's a, this is a tough question. Um, rather, better be than me. Um, share a situation in which you changed your viewpoint or perspective on a social or policy issue. What was the issue and what information or experience changed your mind? I get to start with that one. Jeez, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm uh, trying to come up with something here. Uh, I mean, I, you know, uh, I don't really come in with a lot of preconceived notions. I mean, we all have our ideologies uh, on things, and I certainly have mine. But uh, I like to look at all sides of an issue. You know, um, I don't shut out any voices. I listen to them all. I assimilate the data and look at it, look at the facts and try to make the best decision. So much like I did on Proposition EE, you know, which is contrary probably to party line for a Republican, you know, there are times that I don't follow party line and I will go in another direction if that is the prudent way to go. So I think the best way without coming up with a specific example, unfortunately, is that uh, I look at all sides of an issue. I weigh the pros, cons, the risks, and will make the best decision uh, based on that information that I have in front of me at the time. District 11, candidate McCormick. Yeah, I have a good one. I, I just can't believe you even asked this question. So mine is the National Popular Vote Com Compact. Five years ago, and actually up until that point, I was adamant about protecting the Electoral College. I, you know, just really thought that that was uh, the, the, way, the way it is and it made sense for our country. But I have come 180 degrees on this issue. And it's because I did a lot more reading, a lot more studying, and I understand now that it is absolutely the way to strengthen our democracy. It gets us to a point where Every vote in this nation is weighed equally. Uh, so those of us, uh, you know, I was having this discussion with my Republican next door neighbor who uh, we get along great uh, and he was wondering what to do, but it actually um, allows those in states like ours that might vote blue as a state, all those electoral votes go uh, to the blue candidate. The red, the red voters in our state, actually their votes will count with this compact. And so, um, I'm happy to have changed my mind. District 12, candidate Burnett. I'd have to say this was an issue that I was neutral on and I just, and I, and, and by research, I changed my mind on that. And this is after I talked to a Republican senator of mine uh, uh, that I know about fracking. And we both agreed, we're both engineers. And we said, okay, let's look at the data. And so I did. I have looked at so many, uh, when I work with both uh, Senators Mike Foote and Faith Winter as a policy analyst down at the state capitol, I dug into the detailed research behind that and, uh, and, and looked at studies that our, my Republican um, friend uh, also suggested I looked at. And I came away um, concluding that fracking is dangerous. It should not be near homes and residences and the air quality um, implications are huge. So this is something I came in as an engineer and as a business person, knowing that people are, you know, that, that, that uh, this is part of your, our economy. And I changed based on the data. Thank you. District 12 candidate Davila. 
I'm embarrassed to say this, but could you please repeat the question? I, I got distracted <laughs> with all the other conversations. Okay. It's good. Um, share a situation in which you've changed your viewpoint or perspective on a social or policy issue. What was the issue and what information or experience changed your mind? Okay, popular vote. Uh, growing up, I always thought that this country should be a true democracy and that every vote should count individually instead of being done through a process where states are represented through the electoral college. And up until I moved here to Colorado, I believed that. Now, after I moved here, I realized that Colorado's interests are different from California. And for fair representation, we need to have a republic representation-based system where it's represented through space or area, so to speak, as opposed to population. We have the population represented in the House and we have the, um, the states represented as gov uh, in the uh, Senate. And there's a reason for that. So I, I've changed my mind and I now support the um, Electoral College because of the way it's representing everybody equally, not just based on population. After all, um, true democracy is nothing short than mob rule. Now we're going to move to our closing statements and we're going to start with candidate um, District 11, candidate McCormick. Well, thank you um, to the League for hosting this forum. I really appreciate the opportunity. We've discussed a lot of the issues today and sometimes it may seem that the issues that we face are too hard, but as you all know, we can do hard things. And I believe that running for office takes a good deal of optimism for the future. I'm ready to work for Colorado to fight systemic racism and root it out at every level and to work for our kids and to make sure that they have the best public education possible to address climate change and to find equitable ways to move us forward and to be a loud voice for affordable health care for every human. There is much work to do to achieve the vision of the future that benefits all of us. You can depend on me to always listen with respect and compassion. You can depend on me to be accountable and accessible to you. I'm excited about the possibilities ahead and ready to work hard for you. I would be honored to be your next state representative. Thank you all so much. District 12, candidate Burnett. Again, thank you so much. This actually has been pretty cool. <laughs> I've enjoyed this uh, conversation. You know, um, again, I'm running on three things, environment, education, and equity. Um, and I know I'm ready to lead. I have a proven uh, track record of doing so. And so do so many of my supporters. I'm endorsed by all three mayors in all three cities in my district, in, in District 12, as well as many city councilmen in Lafayette, Louisville, and Longmont, you know, as well as many community leaders, Jonah Goose, Mike Foote, all three county commissioners. You know, <laughs> I have run 36 marathons and uh, last year, I was ranked number one in the world in the indoor mile in my age group. You know, that took a lot of hard work and determination and perseverance. But these are the kind of things that I think will help me bring bold leadership to the state capitol because I won't give up until we cross the finish line. And it's also because it's very personal for me. So I'm, again, Tracy Burnett, running for House District 12. And uh, please, you know, look me up on, the, on my website. I would email me. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you. District 12, candidate Davila. Well, I'd like to know how Tracy got endorsements from the city's mayors because they're supposed to be nonpartisan. That sounds great. I'll start knocking on their doors now. So thank you for that. Um, look, I'm here to represent my community on state issues. That's what the job is. I cannot do anything about the local community issues. I can only represent my community. And I want to make sure that we stay Colorado. We don't end up like California, New York. I've lived in both those states. I don't want to see us turn to that. That's why I left them. That's why I moved here. We don't want to create our tax situation or burden so that we are bankrupt like California is. We don't want the consequences of well informed litigation. Uh, legislation creating a, a hellhole like New York has turned into. What I want to see is us stay Colorado. And that's what I want to do for my constituents. Thank you. District 11 candidate Milliman. I'd like to thank you for this opportunity to uh, introduce myself to the community even more uh, since this is my first time running. And I'm running because I am personally suffering and feeling the pain 
that everyone else is out there, you know, uh, through some personal hardships. And that is why I started out running. Then I've experienced it myself. I am determined to do what it takes to help everybody out there that's suffering through the similar problems, and especially ad addressing the mental health issues in our community that have been ravaged upon us by one person that is currently running the state. And if we don't change that right now, by changing the legislature, we will continue from that probably almost indefinitely. So first of all, we need to open the economy. We need to give people educational options that wanna get their kids back to school or that wanna leave them home. And I'm also running because we need thought diversity in our state legislature, not just a single ideology. Go to millimanforcolorado.com. Thank you. On behalf of the league, I would like to thank all of our candidates, not only for your participation in today's forum, but also for your participation in the democratic process. Running for office, as I know you all have figured out, in serving as elected official, it is very hard work and we very much appreciate your efforts. Thank you to our league candidate forum volunteers, including the league's invaluable operations director, Mandy Nuku, and Sergio Angeles of the Longmont Public Media. Gracias to our interpreter, Rosabel Rice. And finally, to the forum audience, these are challenging times and all the more reason to ensure a strong democratic process that engages as many community members as possible. Colorado has one of the most efficient and accessible voting processes in the country. So we urge you, let's use it. Thanks for your participation and for encouraging your family members, friends, neighbors, to pay attention to the important issues affecting our community and vote. Check out the League Voter Information website. It's vote411.org for election information and for the candidates um, who uh, the candidates have, there's a voter's guide on that as well, as well as information about all of the ballot issues. This forum will be rebroadcast on Longmont Public Media Channel 8 and we hopefully in some of the other channel eights all over the Boulder County area. Links to this forum will appear on the League's website at lwvbc.org. The League of Women Voters of Boulder County works throughout the year to help empower voters and defend democracy. If you want to lend your time, skills, or to encourage civic engagement for all people in a nonpartisan manner, please join us. All the information you need is, w is at www.lwvbc.org. Again, thank you all for, the, for attending the forum and for your participation. Good evening.